I'm here today with my friend Lee Colan. Lee is author, speaker, thought leader, author of I don't know how many books. It's embarrassing. No, it's, a, it's 12, 13. It's, yeah, it's a lot that, of books. Yeah, yeah. And um, Lee and I share a, a philosophy of, of positive attitude. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit about positive mental attitude. Sure. Why is positive mental attitude so incredibly important? Yeah. In short, Skip, uh, your thoughts today lead to your results tomorrow, bottom line. So our, our, our attitude toward our teammates, toward ourselves, you know the old saying, the most important conversation is one we have with ourselves, right? But our attitude toward the world around us, our capabilities, really ends up yielding the kind of results we ultimately get. So it creates a context and a framework and a limitation or an expansion of possibilities about the kinds of capabilities we have, the kind of interactions we might have, the kind of outcomes we might look find, uh, all created starting with our kind of our framework or our mental attitude. So it's really the, the foundation for our success or our struggles our entire life. So some people trace everything back to that attitude yeah. and then actions and everything, and yeah. you subscribe to that as well. Then. Absolutely. I believe you know, there, if there are like two sides of the equation, kind of the side of, of choice. We have to choose our thoughts, our words, and our actions. And that's how we break down attitude, your thoughts, words, or actions. So if you agree with me that you choose your thoughts, words, and actions every day, then we also have to take responsibility for our, our beliefs, our commitments, and our results. So our thoughts yield our beliefs, our words yield our commitments, and our actions yield our results. So um, we have, you know, our thoughts, words, our actions, we, we choose those every day, and, and uh, you know, that that's kind of yields kind of the ultimate the results that we get. So is it possible for people to you know, some people seem like, oh, well, I was, I was born that way. I kind of moped around the house yeah, or somebody right. else is kind of bouncing right, off the right, walls. Right. Is it possible to train yourself? Do you subscribe to that theory? You can train yourself or is it that some people are kind of cast one way and it's very difficult to mold them? I think we could, there, there, I think there is a certain casting. I'm not maybe what, what, my, what, not what you expected me to say, but there's a certain kind of casting there. However, within that, uh, let's say I'm just naturally positive over here, and there's someone that's naturally negative here. But within that, I believe we could train our minds uh, and our thought process to be as positive as we can be within our within our kind of pre prescribed DNA, if you will. Uh, so I think, but, so with, with, for most of us, that's a, there's a big variation there. So there's a big opportunity for us if I tend to be negative toward uh, my spouse, my workers, my own capabilities, whatever. There's a way for us to retrain our thinking to create more positive attitude and think and thinking that ultimately can lead to more positive results. So absolutely, opportunity to all of us, there's always some potential up there to say, how can I kind of you know, retrain myself to think about that? In fact, I, I will, when I have a negative thought sometimes, I'll just say stop, literally out loud. If you see me in an airport someday, if you hear me talking to myself, that's what's happening. I'm saying stop. Oh, we were and, calling people to help you. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and so it's really about retraining your thinking to say, you know what, you know, if I'm stuck in the airport today, oh, I can go on this downward spiral. It's a pain. I can't believe it. I'm a victim. Instead of saying, you know what, here's an opportunity for me to read a book or write a new chapter of a new book or whatever it might be. So there's opportunities for us to retrain our thinking every day. So maybe get a smile out of Eeyore, but not turning Eeyore to Tigger. There we go. Sounds Thank you. Kind. There we go. See, I like that. There you go. Perfect. So um, uh, one of the things you talk a lot about uh -huh. is adherence and mm -hmm. stick-to-itiveness sure. and discipline. How are they related? You know, positive yeah. attitude and discipline. Is that something that, is it related? And how do you, how do you make the discipline kind of follow those positive yeah. mental things? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think our, our life is just all a, it's all a mental challenge. You know, the games won up here, right? So our ability to stick to something or persevere with something really starts with, do we think we can, we can do that, right? So I see an obstacle. Do I look at it as a stepping stone or a stumbling block, one or the other, right? So... Uh, if you look at all the great stories, anecdotally, just the history, but also research too, that will tell us that it all starts with our mental attitude or about our ability to be able to overcome that obstacle and stick with something. And even if we don't, you know, if we fail, do we view that as I'm a failure or this situation was a failure and I'm going to figure out how to overcome that. So that's all about how we frame that situation in our mind. So our mental framing of situations uh, and then how we respond to them, all the game played up here is a direct 
directly correlated to our ability to persevere. So that you don't get stuck. That's it. You get That's stuck. It. Well, one of your quotes, I, I just love this mm. quote, uh, winning depends less on a brilliant plan than mm. on consistent actions. Right, absolutely. And it seems those, those things are related. Yeah. Where, what have you seen about that? I mean, you've, you've yeah. interviewed people, successful yeah. people, you've worked as a consultant, yeah. you've, you've written all these books. Yeah. How are those things related? Yeah, I think a great, I would say a good plan gets you in the game and consistent execution or stick to propels you into the winner's circle, right? So when we work with clients across the world, we, we see that most of them have pretty good or in most cases, very good plans or strategies. And what really sets them apart is their ability to execute that strategy day in and day out. And that might be me and you with our personal goals or a, you know, a Fortune 100 company with their high level strategy. So that's really what sets people apart is their ability to execute day in, day out with that, those daily disciplines so they could stay on course. Uh, and, and again, focusing on the end game, the goal, we want to stick to that goal, but we also have to be quick to, to quit an approach that's not working. And sometimes people kind of get those confused. So I want to have that goal. I'm not going to let go of that goal, but sometimes we keep doing something. I'm not getting closer. I'm not getting closer. And, and we stick to our approaches sometimes more than we should. We, stick, we should stick with our goal. We should quit our approaches very quickly if it's not helping us get to the goal. And that's a very difficult thing to know. Yes, to do, right. It? So it's a fine distinction there. Well, what about, Lee, the person who, you know, they, they want to have this goal. They mm -hmm. want to have the discipline. They're, they're, they're doing all the right things. Uh -huh. But they find themselves surrounded in a sea of negativity. You know, right. everybody's... Ah, I'm pulling them down. And right. Why do you want to do that? Yeah. And are you nuts? And you're never going to do yeah. this. You know those voices, yeah. whether sure. it's internal or just people that are sure. surrounding them. And there's just all this negativity. What do you tell them? I mean, you've worked with people yeah. like this. What do you do for them? Yeah, and you know what? That's really what becomes important. We have our own conversations with ourselves because we sometimes have to lift ourselves above the, the negativity that, that, we, that we are surrounded by. And so number one is we have to choose kind of the inputs that are, that are around us, whether it's choosing the kind of things we read in the morning to lift us up versus something that drags us down and choose the people that we're around. But sometimes we can't choose those people. We're just, we're just around those. And it really puts the onus on us to maybe even seek other people outside that are more uplifting, more encouraging, and also be particularly kind of uh, just steadfast in our own conversation with ourselves to make sure we're rising above that. Because uh, I'd like, you know, we don't, I don't want to be Pollyanna about, oh, just be upbeat. Well, the fact is there are sometimes negative people around us, uh, but, it, but the, it, it, there's no easy answer to that. We just have to really start getting other positive inputs, whether it's outside or, or really pour more into ourselves uh, to overcome that. Well, I want to ask one last question, which is sure. you have a positive person, somebody who's sticking to it, but they want to impact the whole organization. They want to impact their culture. They want sure. their team to be as positive. So sure. they're maybe leading a small team and they want to make sure that everyone is on board with that. How yeah. does that person affect the team? Yeah, I think, you know, um, you're, the, the role of a leader and, the, and the, the dynamic of being a role model is very powerful. So I don't think we could underestimate that. So. Uh, just by me being positive with my team and we run into a roadblock and our budget gets cut or a timeline gets, gets reduced, how I react to that is a huge impact on how my team's going to react. So even when we kind of have those kind of those moments of adversity, how do we respond to that? So really, I'm not sure there's a magic answer either, but it's are we being positive? Are we showing that we're having a positive attitude, that I'm persevering, that I'm finding a way to get things done and achieve for my team and serve them versus finding barriers and everything that's happening, that, that's huge, people see that. So it's not like this uh, magic secret sauce of something you have to be doing differently. But if we're living that out, the, the modeling dynamic in a workplace or in a home, whether you're a parent or a leader on the home front or the work front, is, is huge. So I just think being the positive, setting the positive example yourself and not playing Uncle Sam, oh, you guys be positive, you go do this, set it yourself, and, and then people follow people generally. Follow, yeah. yeah, and those little actions then start to just kind of cascade. That's it, yeah. Well, uh, thank you, this is great. You, yeah, you have pleasure. written many, many books. Uh, I don't know how many more books are inside you, but uh, Always I have think something we're, gonna there. See, yeah. we're gonna see a few more. And your kids have written a book they have. as well. So they have. It seems to be genetic. I, I guess there's a genetic <laughs> book writing uh, gene that we don't know about. Uh, DNA, <laughs> we'll be discovering it. So thank you very much. It's My great. pleasure, thank you, Skip, appreciate it.